So I made it down here to the Red Roof Inn, which was formerly the Knights Inn, which is its, what, third iteration of this hotel, to come check out the place where Selena was shot and killed. So we're gonna walk it today to see exactly how it went down. And it's, uh, to be honest, it's really surreal to be here. You know, to see it in person, you see it in all the news media and everything. But right here at this door, at room 150, formerly room 158. And that is where Selena was shot and ended up dying over there in the lobby that is right about there. She made it that whole way. We, we don't know what the conversation, what conversation took place in that room. Uh, only, of course, Yolanda knows now. And at about 11.48, that's when she actually pointed the gun at her as Selena was walking out of that door. And she shot her at about, I wanna say about a minute later. When that happened, Selena ran out this way, leaving, leaving traces of blood right there on the concrete. As she ran this way, in the crime scene photos, you can actually see while well, these two palms were there at the time, right here at the bottom, she drops her cell phone, and a little bit right after that, she drops the briefcase with all the documents of Yolanda's theft. She runs this way, she makes her way this way. As she's bleeding, as she's clutching her right, the right side of her chest, right here is where she drops her purse, actually. You can see it in the in the crime scene photo too as she drops her purse at this point. And she makes her way down this way. Poor thing just ran this whole way as she's bleeding. At the time, she didn't know, but she was shot with a uh, hollow point. I don't know if now, I don't know if, if uh, Yolanda knew what kind of ammunition she was buying because a hollow point is a really, really, really bad bullet. Like, I mean, there are no good ones, but these, I mean, they, whatever they hit, they tear up pretty bad. So I, I'm not even sure if she knew what she was buying or what she had, but that's what she got her with. And she, um, she ended up severing a, from uh, my understanding, it's a pencil-sized artery called the subclavian artery. While Selena's holding her uh, her wound internally, I mean that that artery is just—I mean she's losing blood at a at an exponential rate. And as she's running, plus her heart's pumping harder and panicking, you know that that adrenaline's running. You know you're gonna lose blood a lot quicker. She makes her way into there, telling the manager to lock the door, saying that she's gonna that she's gonna come back and shoot. Not knowing not knowing if, if Salvador is right behind her or not. You know, she doesn't know, she's just running. And that's where she collapses. And her last words were, well, actually, as she's running, she's well, I'll get back to that right now. But as she's in there, she tells her last words were Yolanda 158. As she, as her, uh, as the um, the staff describes it, her eyes rolled back into her head, and she just passed out. So the poor thing made it from all the way over there to here. That's about 392 feet. 392 feet of running with your subclavian artery completely cut in half. That is that is nuts. And as she was running, I'm not sure of what part, but she was screaming, help me, help me. I've been shot, quote unquote. But yeah, it's so surreal to be here. It's so surreal to be here. And as a matter of fact, at 10 o'clock in the morning, 
she got a call from her, no, she, her brother ended up calling Chris and letting her know that Selena was late for the recording, for a recording session. So Chris gives her a call at about 10 in the morning to let her know, hey, you're late. And her words to him was she was taking care of one last item of business and that was the last phone call she ever had with her husband so that infamous standoff happened somewhere in this parking lot I can't be exactly sure where at the time that fence wasn't there and that uh, Hampton certainly wasn't there but it was somewhere here facing that way in her shitty little red uh, pickup truck it was somewhere here but like I said, it's very hard to pinpoint it as, you know, at the time there was really no, I mean, there was coverage of it, but you could only see, you know, uh, close up shots of the truck. But yeah, this is it right here. Not much to see, just the parking lot, but given the historical significance of it, it's quite trippy to see it. And yeah, there it is. Room 150, formerly room 158.